So over the week, I got a challenge from a group of friends. Someone sent me this website that the Financial Times has created asking if anybody can reach net zero by 2050 as the best climate activist in the country. I'm obviously going to be able to do it in one try. So I'm going to solve climate change. Here we go. <laughs> Your goal. You need to keep global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius by cutting energy related carbon dioxide to net zero by 2050. I'm going to stomp this. Welcome to the game. World leaders want to get serious about climate change. They appoint me, the global minister for future generations. That's right. To make the decisions squabbling nations have dodged for decades. All right. Choose my advisor. We've got Gina Green, who is a teen actor. <laughs> It's basically Greta. You've got Waldo Watts, an entrepreneur developing new technologies. This is basically Elon Musk, no? I don't want him. I don't actually think Greta is very helpful. <laughs> As a climate activist myself, anyway, I think we're replicating skills there. So we don't need her. We'll get rid of Greta. I don't want to work with an Elon Musk equivalent. Gross. David Deals, my boy. I think I'm going to go with David. I like businesses. I have a budget of 100 effort points to spend on saving the planet. Answers will cost more as I progress through the game, but smart investments will earn points back. All right, round one. Do I phase out coal plants in wealthy countries over 10 to 20 years, or do I let the market take its cost and coal demand will fall? Well, as a seasoned economist, I think the market solves all our problems. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Does the latest science allow for coal in developing countries? I think the answer is no. So I'm going to go with this one. Question two. So they're asking basically for what is the most feasible tech right now? Oh shit, this is tough. <laughs> okay, roads made of solar panels we can pretty much eliminate. Reforestation using drones is too slow because trees take too long to grow. Better electric vehicle batteries. I don't actually think that makes such a big difference. I'm going to say carbon capture from factories. I think that's a big chunk. I think green hydrogen is relatively close. All right, I'm going to go with green hydrogen. I'm going to go with carbon capture from factories. Transport is the fastest growing CO2 emission and car sales are going up. Oh fuck, I should have picked the batteries. <laughs> no, I made a mistake. Uh, invest in self-driving car pulling the cut congestion and basically quadruple Tesla stock. Ban all global sales of traditional cars by 2035 and invest in electric cars. They're already doing this. This is already a commitment by most of the car companies. Not most, but many of the car companies, and I suspect they'll all come around. I don't actually think that's the answer because public transport is pretty good and you kind of want people in trains and buses, not private cars. All right, uh, buildings. Buildings and construction make up almost one third of energy use. What will you do? Mandate that cities must knock down all poorly insulated homes and replace them with a highly efficient equivalent. I like this idea. I think we're gonna make everybody homeless unless you live in the latest, most cutting edge building. I think that's definitely the solution here. I also feel that then you need to build new buildings, right? And that takes a whole bunch of concrete. So I think this is not a good option. So we're gonna go with global coal and oil boiler sales. All right, next. Where's and oh fuck. <laughs> Where's Antarctic ice sheet disintegration? Well done for your hard work so far. In Antarctica, a giant iceberg, almost the greater size of Greater London, has broken off. Let's find out what has happened. Oh. The ice sheet remains stable. Let's go! Oh, but I'm barely making a dent in CO2. Wow. Industry alone makes up about a quarter of energy related CO2 emissions. What do I want to do first? Stand all disposable cups and start a campaign to recycle. Oh my god. <laughs> The last one is so pointless. <laughs> Why would you even bother at that point? I think we have to go big on this one. I've won an award. Nature, planting 100 million trees has, has improved the health of the world's forest. Nice. I've got lots of points. Oh, fuck. I've only got one award. Round two, 2026 to 2030. Polling shows some voters think I'm moving too fast and they're worried electricity bills will soar. How will you get them on side? Ask Twitter to promote the hashtag Save Our Planet because that's going to have a huge impact. Thank you, Twitter. What will I do to address emissions from planes? Developed a few powered hypersonic plane that can travel from London to Sydney in four hours to cut commercial flight times. So this one, I think, is a bait. It's the same with cars. The faster you drive a vehicle, the more fuel you use per unit time. And in order to hit the speeds, you're using a lot of fuel. So this is not the answer. Cap the number of long haul flights. Introduce a frequent fire tax. Yes, sir. I'm a big fan of a frequent fire tax. Oh, yes, ma'am. Sorry, we're inclusive here. Do you want to set a global carbon price? Yes, $1,000 per ton. Nice. I like that. Uh, last round. We're going to go max there. We're now in a... Uh, climate uh, autocracy and I as the supreme climate commander will uh, put in place the most extreme climate solutions. Oh no! A presidential candidate who supports slash and burn policies comes into power. Is this a way to say Bolsonaro without saying Bolsonaro? <laughs> How will I reduce emissions from the food that people eat? All proteins and diets must not come from insects. I think it's a really good idea. I mean, people eat like raw fish. If you take it out of context, raw fish is freaking disgusting. But uh, it's a delicacy now that like that people get into. There's a critical shortage of critical minerals. Aish. What do I do? Send a mission to Mars. 
<laughs> there are no minerals on us, so the solution is to go to Mars. <laughs> no. On principle, I refuse to partake in this Elon Muskian dystopian dream. So we're not going to Mars to mine for the tin. That's dumb. I'm going to invest in research to new recycled materials. All right, see how I've done. Since what's my temperature? 1.48! First try, baby! Yes! You have successfully achieved the most ambitious target of the Paris Climate Accord and saved the Earth from the worst effects of climate change. Well done. How do I compare? 43% of players got the same result. Figures do not include players sacked from the rule. Alright, so I wasn't sacked from the rule. That was great. So I saved the planet on the first try. Amazing. No point playing again. Obviously, as I said, I am the best uh, climate activist ever. Don't come for my crown. So what do I think of the game? I think it's a great game. It's an interesting way to get people thinking about climate decisions. Although I do think that land use change and agriculture probably is a bigger part of the solution. I also wonder about the oceans. There was very little about the oceans and the oceans are a huge part of any climate solution. I think 70% of oxygen that's produced comes from the ocean and could have been part of the game. Uh, but in general, I think it was great. Um, I think it's an accessible way to put everyone in the policy seat. I'm glad I got it the first try and uh, yeah.